Hi, today we're going to be taking a look at this Launch X431 Pro Elite card diagnostic tool. Now, unlike uh, many of the devices that we've looked at in the past, this one is more firmly designed for the professional user, partly because of its price point, uh, currently retailing for a little bit over £600 in the UK. There are various discount codes available that might be able to get you this device for a little bit cheaper than that, but certainly that puts it out of the price range for most hobbyists, unless you're really into diagnosing cars and trying to fix them. So this one uh, has quite a lot of functionality actually. It's got this 8 inch TFT display on the front of it and then we've got various functionality and where this one in particular differs from the slightly cheaper tools is this one does actually have bi-directional controls and the bi-directional controls are pretty much essential for some of the more advanced diagnostic functionality. So that might mean that if you've got a trouble with particular solenoids, actuators or other things in the vehicle, you can specifically activate certain things in the car which you wouldn't be able to normally. So for example, say you've got a problem with your purge solenoid on the EVAT system, you can actually trigger the solenoid on and off with this unit without having to make the car uh, do that itself or without having to probe the leads directly. So there's quite a lot of functionality that this type of system adds. But, as I said, that's probably more for the professional than the home user. So this one um, has a large battery in it. It will last for quite a long time without being plugged in, but uh, this one does have a cabled connection to the diagnostic port. And we've got also a USB-C connector for charging, and it came with a mains adapter for charging this unit. It does have Wi-Fi and everything built in, and you do need to create an account to use this device. So um, this one... Although you can continue to use it after the initial two years, um, you get free updates for two full years and then some of the functionality is limited after that period of time. And so now that I've signed in, you can actually go to the mall and have a look at the prices associated with the various functionality. So as I said, you get two years where you can use this fully unrestricted, but then after that point, you have to decide what you want to be able to use this device for. Now, if you only ever look at certain brands of vehicles, you might just be able to pick that brand. For example, Tesla, which is one of the more expensive ones here, $344 for 12 months, but it makes sure you've got full diagnostic capabilities with that brand. Or if you only want to do certain functions, uh, motor angle calibration here, but there's a DPF one as well. So if you only do DPF diagnostics, you only need to pay for that functionality for 12 months, $68, something like that. Then if we go to the service upgrade, this is if you just want the unit to work exactly as it does out of the box. So 12 months carrying on after the two years is $705 for everything on here. Obviously quite an expense there. It would be absorbed normally into the cost of running a business, but if you're a hobbyist then obviously these numbers are a little bit high and actually you'd be better off just buying a whole new unit after that period uh, with another two-year license. Or there's reduced licenses if you only want certain functionalities, but... Um, Again, depending on what you want to use the device for, there's various cost breakdowns. And there might be some discounts as well at certain times a year if you're lucky. So a quick look at the functionality of the unit. So these first two, we need the unit connected to the OBD2 port. The first one here will automatically detect the vehicle, scan, look at the fault codes, and then allow you to communicate with every single module in the car and uh, do the service functions on it or uh, do bi-directional control, read data streams, that kind of stuff. Local diagnose uh, just means that you have to pick the brand and the model first and then it will allow you to communicate with the same modules. Then we've got uh, where a lot of the functionality here is the service functions and this is really what differentiates this unit from the cheaper ones. We've got all of these resets and learning functions for various modules in the car. And these are the types of things that you would normally have to pay for. They're included, again, with that two-year license. But we've got things like uh, relearning the gearbox, so all the clutch positions. Uh, we've got things like uh, resetting the TPMS system, DPF regeneration functions like um, forcing a regen or um, some of the resets associated with that. We've got things like putting the brakes into parking mode, steering angle reset, all of these kinds of things. But there's loads on here, uh, learning about the... Um, headlights so that you can reset the adaptive front lighting. Uh, so lots and lots of functionality on here. Injector coding, so if you replace the injectors you can put in the um, coding value so that uh, it injects the right amount of fuel. So as I said, lots and lots of stuff on here which is uh, really valuable if you use this professionally. 
Uh, remote diagnose, I think you can do that over the internet as well if you've got a VCI uh, plugged into a vehicle and an internet connection. TPMS, now this does actually need a TPMS unit that connects through the VCI interface, but it means that you can uh, read the sensors and reprogram them as needed. Software updates, that's pretty self-explanatory. I think everything on here is up to date. Um, you've got diagnostic history. So if you've um, looked at a car before, you can just go through and have a look at what you found that time. Feedback for the operating system and functionality. Uh, this is for the adaptive driving uh, system, all of that uh, functionality. Again, that needs a special interface to be able to use that with vehicles. Uh, and then we've got a list here of all the cars or vans that are covered by this unit. And it is really quite extensive. Uh, there's not very many vehicles that this unit can't communicate with. You can see all of the brands. And then if you go into that, you can see all of the models that it's able to communicate with and the functionality that it has. So uh, if we just go here, just randomly into one, we can have a look and see all of the functionality that's available for that particular model. Then we've got our personal information. You can set this up so that it puts your uh, details on the diagnostic reports and that kind of stuff. And then other modules here. Um, so this uh, this unit actually has a camera on here with a flash so you can take photos of the diagnostics. And it's quite useful if you're using this with customers, you can take a photo of the stuff that's faulty. Or you can just take a photo so you can remember how to put things back together. Uh, you can do screenshots and video of the screen and you can email things uh, from the unit as well. So quite fully featured. I think now we'll just go and plug it into the car and first of all, see how quick it is to communicate with all the modules. We've seen various units that are pretty slow at trying to talk to all the modules. So we'll see how that is. We'll have a look at the data streams. This one is able to graph eight things at once on a single graph, which is uh, more than most of the others. Most of them are restricted to four things. So it improves the diagnostics there. And we'll just have a quick look at uh, the type of functionality it offers. All right, so the unit's plugged into the car and we'll go to Intelligent Diagnose and this should be able to read the VIN and work out what vehicle is connected and then we're able to start the diagnostic session. So it's reading the VIN now, decoding it and it's found the vehicle already. Diagnostic here. And it already knows, you might just be able to see there which modules are expected in this vehicle. So this should improve the speed at which it uh, communicates with the car. And there we go, nice and quick. We can do a health report. This scans every module for codes. And there we go, all done, really nice and quick. Now, interestingly, uh, we've got a fault code for the camera module now. That's just started playing up again after all those years of fixing it. If I put it in reverse, we get nothing on the reversing screen. So it's not even doing the flashing. And it says here, we've got a fault code control module. So uh, let's have a quick look at that. Read fault code. I wonder if it's finally died. Doesn't really give any information about that, just that there's a fault with it. I'll have to check the power and grounds again to that unit. Uh, perhaps one of the nuts that I put on previously for that extra ground connection has come loose. But uh, yeah, I noticed the camera stopped working the other day. Uh, but we can, uh, should we see if we can have a look at any of the data streams? Maybe it's lost communication altogether. And yeah, it hasn't got anything on there. So I wonder if it's not connected or something at the moment. Uh, we can have a look at the driver's door module and we'll read the fault code there 
retrieve continuous DTC. And yeah, it's not happy about the LED puddle lights that I've got on the mirrors, but other than that, uh, it's just coming up with the errors there. Now, if we did want to clear those errors, it will come straight back, but uh, we'll just go back into there for a moment. So this is the same for any module, but you can go clear DTCs. It will ask you if you want to clear the fault memory, and then it will say it's completed. Now, I don't know if it's continually checking, it doesn't look like it is, but the next time I start the car, it would say that these DTCs are back anyway because I've still got the fault there. We can read data streams. As you can see, this is all really quite quick. It's a big difference from some of the other units. We can just go through nice and quick and look at the, um, the various menus on here. We'll pick some data streams here, and it's got the status of all of those. So we've got things like the ECU voltage, mirror position, as a voltage, I think it's got some potentiometers in the wing mirrors, but you can see this is all nice and quick to read. And we can plot this as a graph, I think, if we click on that. And then we've got them all plotting together. That's eight graphs, and I think we can combine them onto a single graph, uh, four at a time. And so uh, it's actually put those four together. The door lock switch, if I lock the doors, you can see that's changed the state of one of those. So. Again, the update rate on the graphing is very similar to all the others, about once per second, possibly just slightly quicker than that. But everything on here is super, super quick. And it's quite impressive, actually, that uh, it's this quick. Uh, I think it did say supports gesture scaling, but oh, there we go. We can change the scale just by pinching on the display. But yeah, pretty quick stuff there. It's all nice and responsive. Now, in terms of the bi-directional controls, you can either go into a specific module. So let's go to the body control module just here. And we've got two menu sections here, actuation tests and special functions. So this is uh, some of that extra functionality. Uh, we've got some of the options here on the vehicle. It varies depending on what vehicle you're communicating with. But for example, if we want the indicators to flash when we're locking the vehicle, then you can change the setting just on here. And also special functions here. So if you've got things like uh, a new battery that you've installed and you want to reset the parameters for that, you can do that from here. Or if you install a new module into the car, you can do all that programming from this point. Or if you don't know which module is the controller for it, you can go back down to the root menu. So don't select any modules and go to special functions on here and then you can pick roughly uh, where that unit sits we've got uh, electrical here for example and then let's say we've got the supplemental diesel heater in this unit uh, we can click on here and we can do things like uh, priming the fuel system on there or depending on what it is if you've got side obstacle detection it can do the calibration on there and then we've got module programming so again another level uh, which you might not have access to on some of the cheaper tools. So if you've got a new module that requires programming to the vehicle, uh, then this is where you do it, and you, then you can put in the appropriate programming data if you've got a brand new module or if you've got one of eBay that needs reprogramming to work with your specific vehicle. So yeah, lots of functionality on here, and the big thing I'm noticing here is everything seems to be really quick on this unit, a lot faster than some of the other diagnostic tools, but also we've got this nice screen, which is really nice and clear and got plenty of space to display all of the information. So that's the X431 Pro Elite and the general functionality of the unit. But one thing that makes this thing quite exciting is the add-on modules that you can buy for the unit. So I think I mentioned that there's a TPMS device that you use to physically program the sensors, but it communicates with the actual diagnostic tool and has the graphical user interface on there. Similarly, there's an interface for programming keys and you drive that through the user interface on here. We've got things like the remote battery test of the BST360. You put the terminals onto the battery, but then you can do the battery testing from this unit itself. And we've got video scope, oscilloscope, some multimeters and Wi-Fi printer and that kind of stuff. So various different add-on modules which really enhance the functionality of this unit and allow you to use the tablet screen to its full extent. So really quite a nice unit. 
I'll put a link in the description down below if you're interested in just taking a look at it and um, occasionally I think there might be one on uh, October the 10th and 11th at Amazon.co.uk at least they're doing some sales so there might be a voucher on there as well if you're interested in taking a look at this unit. So I hope you found the video useful and informative and until next time thanks for watching.